Like it or not, it takes more than being able to bust out cool tricks in Photoshop or Illustrator to become a successful graphic designer. While I love a good design tutorial, part of my mission with this channel has been to pull back the curtain and share some of the very real day-to-day -day aspects of my journey. So that begs the question, what does it mean to be successful as a graphic designer? Does it mean having so many clients that you're completely overwhelmed and burned out? Does it mean sacrificing your physical and mental health to impress your clients? Or does it simply mean making more money? I'm not gonna lie, I still wanna have a lot of clients and make good money to make my life as an artist sustainable, but I've realized that there's more to it than that. Here are five ways I've learned to measure success for myself as a graphic designer, and I hope they're helpful for you in your journey. I really believe that whether you're working as a full-time in-house graphic designer or a full-time freelancer, that it's super important to have multiple streams of income. So I spent most of my career working as a full-time in-house graphic designer, and I gained a lot of valuable experience this way. But the problem is that if I was let go or laid off, my main source of income was taken away, and it sucks. This has actually happened to me on several occasions, yeah, at least four or five times. And the first few times, I remember being really fearful because I didn't know what I was gonna do. Well, this made me realize that I needed to have something else in place so that if I were to be let go or laid off again, I would at least have some kind of money coming in. For me, that looked a little bit like doing design tutorials where you know, I had a lot of creative freedom and I would work with websites like PSD Fan, Design Instruct, later Design Cuts, and even Go Skills. I would occasionally get, you know, a freelance project on the side to maybe do some logo design or branding work or even things like posters and flyers. This gave me a little bit of peace of mind knowing that if I were to get let go, I would at least have something there to help me bring in a little bit of money and fill in the gaps in between jobs. For the last eight to 10 months or so, I've started to build my own business and go full-time freelance. I've realized the importance of diversifying my income even more. And I do this by trying to have a few different types of clients. Right now, I've been working with a couple of different agencies, a few TV networks, a few independent filmmakers, and I've even had a couple of really interesting branding projects come up. Let's say the agency, for example, might book me for a few weeks or a month. Well, if I have that, and then I have a TV network that's also giving me maybe one to two projects a month, then I can sort of, you know, generate a little bit of extra income during that time. But if something dries up with one of those clients, I've got a few other things that I can turn to to make sure that there's still some kind of income coming in. And a small piece of that pie might be, you know, YouTube AdSense, which is a pretty small portion of the pie, let me tell you. But also things like Go Skills. I've created some Illustrator courses for them and they will give me like quarterly royalties based on how many people are signing up for the courses. I'm also now experimenting a little bit with Gumroad and trying to create some of my own digital products. Things like mock-ups and other key art and movie poster related type of design assets. I'll drop a link below in the description so you can check out my Gumroad shop. Let me know if digital products is something that you're interested in learning more about on some of these videos. I just wanna reiterate that I'm not advocating for like hustle culture, telling you to overwork yourself. I don't believe in that. And I certainly don't want to condone burnout for any other graphic designers. But what I am saying is that I think it's important for us to find ways to sort of protect ourselves in case we do lose a job and we lose our main source of income. Over the last eight to 10 months, the majority of my clients have come from people I've formerly worked with, colleagues and referrals. While it feels really great when this happens and the stars align, I realize that this isn't always going to be the case. But another thing that I'll do in situations where things do slow down or dry up is to be proactive. And what I mean by being proactive is going out and looking up those dream companies, those dream clients that I personally want to work with. And in situations like this where I may not have a connection, I'll go on a site like LinkedIn and see if maybe someone I've worked with or someone I know knows somebody else and ask them to introduce me or I can reach out directly. A lot of times LinkedIn feels the most comfortable for me because I spent so long working as a nine to fiver but I just have a lot of connections there, so it feels a little bit more natural. Another way that I can do this is I will sometimes look up, you know, people who work in a marketing department at some of the agencies or film companies that I wanna work with, and I can just go old school and send them an email. This approach doesn't always yield a whole lot of results, and it's important to try to mix it up here. Another way that I can try this is 
something that I've shied away from a little bit actually, and that's using Instagram. In the past, I haven't like posted a ton on Instagram to try and share my work and get leads. I've been trying to be better about this. And I'll do that by sharing, you know, reels to show people my work, my knowledge of key art and entertainment and branding, and just putting myself out there more. I try to remind myself that really all it takes is one person to come across your work and see what you do. And that could turn into a client. So it's not really all about, you know, just doing one thing all of the time. I think it's more about having a few different irons in the fire and just, you know, waiting for one of those things to hit. Now, let's get real for a second. I wanna to talk to you about fulfillment. As much as making money is one of my most important metrics for success as a graphic designer, something that is just as important, do I actually like the work that I'm doing? And I think that this is such an important question to ask. When I look back at this and I think about my own experience, any time that I've worked in-house as a full-time graphic designer and I would start to get, you know, really tired or frustrated at a job, it was because of one of two things. It was either feeling like I wasn't being challenged or I would just get bored of, of the work that I was doing because it was the same things over and over again. And what's interesting about this is that a lot of times, you know, a company might look at my portfolio and they would want to bring me in to kind of shake things up or say that they want to, you know, breathe some new excitement and different ideas into their work. But then once I started working there, I realized that, you know, especially with established brands, they have a pretty strict set of brand guidelines that you need to adhere to. So I'm coming in thinking like, okay, I'm going to be able to try all these new ideas and executions and then it would never get approved. So what I had to do was essentially, you know, create things in a very specific style, in a very specific way, which again is understandable, in order to get things approved. But as a result of that, I would start to feel bored. So it was kind of this vicious cycle of, you know, doing things over and over again where I just didn't feel challenged and I would get bored of doing the same things. And through these experiences, I've realized that I'm actually the happiest when I'm doing key art and branding work for different brands, different clients, and actually having a little bit more variety in the type of work that I'm doing. And, you know, I want to be able to collaborate with different people, different teams, and to present my ideas. For me, that's one of the ways that I can feel challenged. I also know that I want to work on projects that are highly visible and that make an impact. And getting clear on this has been one of the most helpful things for me personally as a graphic designer. And it keeps me feeling excited and energized about the work that I'm doing. Keeping the creativity alive. As graphic designers, there's so much time where we just get completely locked in into what we're doing and what we're designing. And it can sometimes feel hard to sort of pull ourselves away and step back from the computer. But oftentimes this is the best way to get new ideas and to sort of replenish your creativity. Some of the ways that I do that are by going on creative walks. And you may have seen one or two of those videos on our channel already. A few other ways that I will do that is by looking at websites like IMP Awards, Behance, even YouTube for like pop culture kind of inspiration, or by going, you know, to museums to get inspired by maybe more classical or traditional mediums of art. And for me, the simple act of getting out and getting some fresh air is so helpful when it comes to my creativity. Oh, I love this idea, which I learned about from Julia Cameron, which is about sort of refilling your creative well. And it's the idea that your creativity is a resource that can be replenished and recharged over time. We spend a lot of time and energy giving ourselves to the creative process and to our work, but we don't take the time to refill our own creativity. Giving myself the time and space to refill my own creative well helps me feel re-energized and it helps me become a better designer. Communication isn't a design skill per se, but it's absolutely necessary to strengthen those muscles in order to become a better and a more successful graphic designer. Now, previously, before I went full-time freelance, I would be tasked with sometimes presenting my work and sharing my ideas in meetings. But when you're around the same group of people that you work with all the time, it gets a little bit easier because you know how they communicate and they know how you communicate. And so you're able to get a little bit more comfortable. Since I've gone freelance, there's a lot of times where I will be in situations where I'm working with new people, new teams, and being in those situations can sometimes be a little bit nerve wracking. 
I remember I used to get, you know, anxious and nervous before those meetings, especially if I didn't know who I was going to be presenting to. The more that I did this, the more I repeated it, the more that I strengthened that muscle and the easier it became. I think it also got a little bit easier because I had a lot of practice talking in videos like this, where I could explain my ideas and my process and talk about creativity and use the terminology. Over time, like I said, I developed that muscle and it became a lot easier to communicate. There's also situations where if you're communicating to somebody who isn't a designer themselves, you want to be able to articulate your ideas clearly and speak the same language using terms that are easy for them to understand. This ensures that everyone is on the same page, especially if you're talking to somebody who maybe they haven't had, you know, a rebrand for their business done before. Maybe they don't really understand the benefits of why they need a rebrand in the first place. So you want to be able to get on that same page and communicate your ideas both visually and verbally. And doing that all together will help you become a more successful graphic designer. So to recap, these are the five things that you want to focus on in order to become a more successful graphic designer in 2024. The first thing we spoke about is diversifying your income streams and generating more revenue. The second is to be more proactive about getting clients. The third is finding fulfillment in your graphic design work. The fourth thing to focus on is in keeping the creativity alive and staying inspired. And lastly is to improve those communication skills. And if you're looking for more ways to get new clients and gigs in 2024, then you'll definitely want to check out this video next where I give you five strategies for getting more clients as a graphic designer. All right, creative, thank you so much for watching. Keep designing and we'll see you in the next one.